the lid here is, is locked with an interlock. So what we do is we turn the machine on with the main switch and we make sure that the emergency switch is also out. And then we wait whilst the machine tightens itself in the control. The machine is now dating itself. We can now turn on the light to give ourselves some illumination and we can lift the lid as the interlock has now switched itself off. The machine has two axes. There is the Z axis, which is the vertical axis, which controls the cutter. That will control the depth of cut. And there is the Y axis, which controls the travis. The x-axis, which is on conventional milling machines, is not used with this particular machine. The face milling head has six cutting tips in it. We have another head here so that we can just easily show for the purpose of filming. The cutting inserts are round and they are designed for cutting non-ferrous materials with this nice polished face. The inserts can be indexed round eight times. And when you index an insert, make sure that you index all of them so that everything remains even. When you change an insert, also check to make sure that the insert pocket is clean and that there are no burrs or damage to it. In use, Cutting on ferrous materials, the insert should last quite a long time if they are used correctly. When you screw the tip on, just make sure that it does sit down nice and flat on the seat there. If that material starts to build up onto the tip, then I suggest that you increase the speed of the cutter. If, if it is very lightly built up on the tip, if the deposit is heavy on the insert, then I suggest that you reduce the feed rate, the depth of cut, and possibly increase the speed of the cutter. This is to make the material which you're cutting flow over the cutter face. For speed and feed rate, I would suggest that initially that you rotate the cutter at approximately 1,300 RPM and for the actual feed rate which is the y-axis I would suggest a feed rate of roughly or approximately 700 millimeter per minute. Depth of cut I would suggest trying initially 0.5 of a millimeter to 1 millimeter. I'll go on to the actual use and operation of the machine. The machine actually has many features in it. What we're going to show this morning is the basic features so you can start to cut metal but we would suggest that before cutting any metal that you familiarize yourself uh, with the machine by running if you like empty or, or above the actual cutting piece first of all. So when we first turn the machine on and it has datumed itself the first thing we have to do is put in a pin number so we tap the screen and the pin number for this machine which is in the manual is 1840 There's 1840 there, enter. OK. Now if we press that, we're now into the operation of the machine. The machine can be used manually or auto. In manual mode, that is for setting the machine. Then once the machine is set, we then go over to the auto mode, which we'll show in a minute. The next thing we like to show is how to datum up the cutter. So first of all we clamp the workpiece into the chuck and then after clamping the workpiece in we have to datum up the cutter with the top surface there and this is done with the aid of this little device here. Now this device here has an LED light there and it has a ball there. The diameter of the ball is 10 millimeter. 
the center of the ball, center line, is approximately in line with the bottom of the cutter. So once we've touched this on the top there, we know that from there to the bottom of the cutter is five millimeter. Now we bring this piece round over the top of the workpiece. We go to the control and we've got manual and we've got auto. To set the machine up we select manual. So we press the Z and it automatically comes to this screen here. We just press the Z again and we've now got feed buttons here which these buttons here will take the head up these buttons here will take the head down. And when I press this you will see the figure starting to change underneath the z-axis. So what I have to do now is bring the ball indicator down until it just touches the top of the component and with that it is best just to look underneath the ball at the same time as operating the z-axis. What we do once we've got the ball close to the top of the component is we then inch down the z-axis until the light comes on on the um, sensor. There the light has now come on on the sensor. So now we know that the bottom of the cutter is 5mm above the workpiece, which is the centre line of the ball. So we now swing the sensor out of the way. We go back to the control. And underneath the z-axis we press this button and you will see that the z-axis is now zeroed out. So now we can actually set our depth of cut. Now that we've set the Z axis, we're now going to set the Y axis, which is the traverse. So here the cutter is perhaps uh, a little bit too far away from the component. We can click to Y and we can just bring the cutter in manually a little bit closer. And once we've got the position and we're satisfied, we can then just press the button there and zero out the Y axis. Then with a simple tape measure, we measure the distance we want to travel. Which in this situation, that we press this button here, and we go back to the menu for manual or automatic. We now press the automatic, and it comes up with the automatic screen. And there are a lot of features on there. Now to set this particular Piece. let's say that we want to machine one millimeter off in 2.5 millimeter steps what we do is we press this button here which is shown in the manual and we then got the depth of cutting which we press that and we can then set in 0.5 a millimeter we go five we go enter, we've now got 0.5 of a millimetre depth cut on the z-axis. If we want to take off a total of one millimetre, we press the cycle button and we press two, or we enter. So now it's going to take one cut at 0.5 of a millimetre, traverse back, go down another 0.5 of a millimetre and take the second cut. We now press this button here and we come back to the automatic screen. We, on the automatic screen we can then look at the cutting uh, parameters. So if we just press uh, say RPM, we've got these parameters here. So if we press RPM, we've got set 1500. I'm just going to reduce that 
down to 1,000. 400. We're going to look at the travel. We need about 60 millimeter, which there is 60 millimeter set, but we can alter that in one millimeter increments. We want to look at the feed rate, and the feed rate at the moment is 1,500. For a starting point, I would suggest a feed rate of 700 millimeter but for the purposes of filming we will leave it at 1500. Pulsing means that the cutter will stop and then start again. That feature I would suggest that you just leave it at zero. Pulse A, again I would suggest that we leave it at three. So now we can go back We now lower the lid. And we're now ready to operate. To operate the machine, once you're satisfied that you've got all the right settings, press and hold the button. The spindle starts up and the Y axis starts to feed through. For the purposes of filming, we're not actually cutting the metal. We've got the cutter above the, the component. On the screen, you see that the z-axis has gone down 0.5 of a millimeter. And you can see the progress here on this percentage chart. When it gets to 100%, it should feed back come down another 0.5 of a millimeter um, so now the cutter is fed down another 0.5 of a millimeter to give a total of one millimeter material removed and it's now doing its second pass At the end of the operation, the cutter head goes back up to zero and it goes back on the Y axis to zero. So the machine's now come to the end of its operation. So we lift the lid and the lid is a heavy lid for safety. Just be wary of, of fingers uh, on the uh, lid there. With reference to the cutting inserts earlier, I'd just like to point out that the machine is used dry and with this type of face mill cutter and inserts, that is the best way to use it. With tungsten carbide, either they need to be used dry or if you do use coolant, you need to flood the coolant. The coolant must not be intermittent, else you will get thermal cracking of the tungsten carbide inserts. Maintenance on the machine, keep it clean clear out the uh, cutting chips, uh, regularly lubricate any grease nipples on the slides, make sure that this sensor head is out of the way when the machine is being used and occasionally check the adjustment of the sensor head to make sure that the center line is approximately in line with the bottom of the cutter tip. This is just a brief overview of the Spectral MM. For more information, please visit our website on www.chemit.co.uk.